Moses lived to be 120 years old. The 40 years before that, he spent in the wilderness with the children of Israel, leading them right to the edge of the promised land that he knew he was never going to set one foot inside. For 40 years, he had committed his life to God's every day, to God's guidance and to God's deliverance for his food, for his water, even where to go. A cloud of, during the daytime, and a pillar of fire at nighttime. And Moses saw some incredible things, didn't he? He saw the Red Sea part and he walked across on dry ground. He had seen frogs and locusts and hail come down on the Egyptian people in abundance. He talked to God in a bush that was burning up that never burned up. And now, 120 years old, Moses gathers all of the children of Israel. He had spent 40 years getting them to that place. And he said, um, I've got one last thing I need to say to you. And God had him write it down. It's in the book of Deuteronomy, that whole book of Deuteronomy. And Moses said this in particular. I want you to lay up all of the words that God has told me to tell you. And I want you to make them part of your heart, part of your soul, part of everything that you do. And teach them to your children. Talk when you are sitting around your house. Talk to them when you are on the way. Talk to them when you lie down. Talk to them when you get up. Moses impresses on us cherish this word of God we will have no other guidance for our life better than the word of God blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it it is so important that you are here on Sunday morning it's so important that we gather together as the people of God around the word of God around the hymns that are inspired by the word of God around praying together, around talking together. Moses impresses on us, find a way. <laughs> find a way to talk to your kids, to your family, to your co-workers, to the people that agree with you, to the people that disagree with you. Find a way to do that. It was James Baldwin that wrote, these words are pretty close to these words. Children have never been good at listening to their elders, but they have never failed to imitate them. If we want to teach forgiveness, we have to be forgiving. If we want to teach kindness, we have to be kind. If we want to teach the Word of God, then that must illustrate our life every day. We our teachers. And you need to know this. Every one of you in this room today and those that are watching from a different place. For some people, you are the only Bible they will ever read. And that responsibility never ends. <laughs> when you're sitting in your house, when you're riding in your car, on the way to school, on the way to work, when you go to bed, when you're at the breakfast table. If we want people to be followers of Jesus Christ, then we must steep ourselves in the Word of God. Because that Word has authority, that Word is dependable. Isaiah chapter 55, as the rain and the snow come from heaven and don't return, without watering first the earth, making it bud and blossom, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God says, that's how my word is when it comes out of my mouth. It is going to accomplish my desires. It is going to achieve the very purpose for which I sent it. And that purpose? St. Paul probably says it as well as anybody when he is writing to young Timothy, he said, Timothy, you have known the Holy Scriptures since you were a little kid. And that is what is able to make you wise for salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's useful for teaching and rebuking and correcting and, and training us how to be righteous people, equipping us for every good work. We have the privilege St. Paul's Lutheran Church, St. Paul's Lutheran School and Preschool, we have the privilege of teaching people about the love that God has for us. We can't save anybody. We can't have faith for anybody else. But we can tell. We can tell what God has done and is doing in our life. I have a classmate from college in the seminary and he told me this some years ago about his daughter Katrina. I've never met Katrina and Katrina at that time at least was working for some Lutheran agency on the East Coast and one of the things that she did was help new Americans get settled in into this country and she went with to a clinic, I believe, uh, an African immigrant mom and her little kids. And before she left her house to pick them up, Katrina packed some things in a bag in case the weight in the clinic was unbearable for those little kids and they might have something to do them. And that proved to be true. And that mom now grabbed out a book when her kids were getting a little restless and it was a big book with pictures in it and it was the story of David and Goliath. And this mom opened up that book, and now in this packed full waiting room in this clinic, she starts reading the story to them about David and Goliath. And she's following along, and then she'd point to the pictures. And as she was going through the story, she was getting involved in the story. And her kids were focused on the pages of that book as mom was reading them to her. And Katrina said, pretty soon, <laughs> everybody in that clinic was kind of hushing down their own conversations. And this woman was getting louder in her uh, African English lilting voice. And now everybody's listening. And she reads on. And David bent down and picked up three smooth stones. One for the Father, and one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. And he put one of those stones in his slingshot and he flung it and he hit that giant Goliath right in the middle of the eyes and he killed him dead. And then he went to that giant Goliath and he took his sword and in the name of Jesus Christ, he cut off his head. And she slammed the book shut. <laughs> Katrina said, her kids were there, didn't move and for several moments, there was not one sound in that clinic. Everybody heard. Now, she couldn't read. She couldn't read one word. But she had heard that story and other stories. Somebody had told her those stories so often that she was reciting now from memory the story of David and Goliath, and adding now her own interpretation about the triune God fitting in there somehow, and Jesus Christ fitting in there. She knew that there was power in those names. That's what happens when we tell. Somebody told her and she heard. She told now and her kids heard. Everybody in that clinic waiting room heard. And we've got something to tell, don't we? We've got something to tell. There's an old hymn that I dearly love. These are just some of the words. They're probably not in any kind of order. Probably uh, like that African woman remembering David and Goliath. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. You know that song? Well, I'll tell you what. Last week, I spent the better part of one day right here in this room with the teachers of our 
Lutheran school and preschool. And while we didn't sing that song, we did talk together and we did pray together. And I can tell you this right now, those kids that come to this school are in the presence of those teachers that exemplify the stories that they have heard since they were kids. They exemplify the life that we live in Jesus Christ. There's not one parent who has a student in that room who should ever fear their child mimicking anything that any one of those teachers does in that classroom. They are a blessing to us. In the book of Acts, it talks about this. Day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ. That's what happens here on this campus every day, in every way. I listened to Mrs. Binney the other day, give the rules, and you did it in such a gentle way, Meredith, and they knew when you were done, I knew when you were done, the rules. Uh, and that's how we, that's how we do what Moses told us to do, talk along the way and tell this story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. It's so pleasant to repeat, each time I tell it is more wonderfully sweet. And those who know it best, hunger and thirst to hear it like the rest. And then, in scenes of glory, I'll sing a new, new song. Twill be that same old, old story that I have loved so long. That's the story that gets told here. That's the story we need to tell with our lives. The stories about God's love for us in Jesus Christ never get old. Amen.